Um, hi everybody, my name is Betul Bayrak uh, and as Bella mentioned, I'm a third year PhD student at Norwegian University of Science and Technology and uh, I'm a member of Data and Research, Data and AI Research Unit at NTNU uh, and also I'm working on Exigon project and here in Madrid, I've been uh, here for th last three months um as a part of uh ic pro ic satellite project actually and thanks to belen juan and marta uh we are collaborating in last three months and it's been quite nice i just want to thank them from here uh before starting to talk about xai for explainable AI for decision-making applications. I want to mention that I'm uh, my PhD is about postdoc explanations and their evaluations. Uh, when I'm saying postdoc explanations, my uh, research interest is more on counterfactuals that we will we will see the uh, we will mention in the end of this uh, session. I just want to wanted to make a short uh, introduction. Uh, but today we will be talking about uh, almost all general concepts that we can mention in this very short time. In the beginning, here is our outline. In the beginning, uh, I want to mention some fundamental terms and concepts. And afterwards, uh, I want to mention the components on, of explainable AI. And afterwards, like models and their explainability and then postdoc explainability methods. Uh, and in the end, we will mention some evaluation techniques that we can use for these to evaluate these systems. And in the end, we will see some uh, applications and we will conclude the uh, presentation very shortly. Let's start with the fundamental terms and the concepts. As we all know, um, in the traditional decision support or decision making algorithms uh, everything is like kind of rule based and when a human looks at the code they can easily understand the reasoning process under it like how this decision is made that it's quite comprehensible for an end user for an end user but in current machine learning algorithms the uh, learned functions are getting complex day by day and it becomes harder to understand for an end user how these decisions are made and this complexity comes with i mean brings a lot of questions to users mind because they never know uh, when they need to um trust that decisions in which cases it can be failed uh, and all other stuff, or if it, there is any bias and all other stuff. And explainable AI applications, we aim to answer all these questions and try to provide uh, more understandable uh, predictions or recommendations or whatever your application is. And I briefly want, I want to briefly mention some very basic terms uh the first one is transparency um transparency we can basically call the transparency as understandability of the model by a human let's say uh, because we said in a linear regression model or in a rule-based application a human can easily understand the reasoning process under uh, that model uh, but when we look at a neural network we cannot easily understand what's happening and how these decisions are made right so we can easily say that linear regression model a regular linear, linear regression model is more transparent than a neural network uh, and opaqueness is like a reverse of transparency actually and when a model is very opaque and it's almost impossible to understand uh, what's going on in the model by a user or by a human we call them as black box models i just wanted to mention these three uh, because we will use them very common for the rest of the presentation uh, and here is the 
here is two main uh, terms that we will need to understand for exp to to be able to understand explainable AI concepts actually the first one is explanation explanation is technical summarization of how an ml artifact functions i want to highlight how in here and interpretation is contextualization of why an ml artifact emerges in human experience uh, it's very important to be aware of uh, differences between two, these two terms and I need to mention that uh, in the literature there are many different interpretations of uh, in terms of definitions of these two terms uh, but these definitions are like the most I can say the most suitable ones among the ones that I have been uh, faced until now uh let's talk about a bit talk a bit about the components of explainable ai systems um here is a list and this list is not ordered unordered this is an unordered list and as you can see a kind of pyramid in here but unfortunately i cannot provide you and pyramid uh the I cannot say that unfortunately but i can say that here is the components like data model end users expert knowledge and evaluation and according to your requirements while you uh, develop your system you can shorten this list or change the order of this list and build your own pyramid i mentioned then this in the beginning because we will learn a lot of uh, concepts and we will try to understand in which cases we can uh, include or exclude which steps or which components actually um, yeah as you can see here uh, when we very simple uh, when we try to represent an explainable AI system uh, in a very simplistic overview uh, maybe we can just show that here is data and model and prediction predictions made, made by model and explainer explanations made by explainer and also here is an end user here is end users uh, who receives both when uh, i try to figure out which part is the explanation part in this system maybe we can say this part is the xai part but actually i mean it's always considered like that but actually what we need is considering entire ecosystem as an explainable system and while developing your system being aware of all these components and try to approach uh, all these components in a different uh, overview like in a kind of interpretable and explainable way so it will be an entire explainable system and our aim is to develop systems that are completely explainable but we will see the challenges in the next slides it's almost uh i i can say that it's not possible all the times and to make it very simplistic i um mainly uh categorize them in three steps in three step sections let's say uh, the first one is pre-processing the second one is making our models more transparent and more uh, explainable and then combining these uh, two first step with a postdoc explanation method and for sure in the end uh, we will try to evaluate them and for the rest of this uh presentation i will be following these this order actually uh but before starting to that uh these steps i want to mention some challenges as you remember i mentioned some of them in the previous uh slide and i said uh, like optimals and optimal system should cover all the components of xai but sometimes it's impossible for example for many applications we are we are not able to touch to model because we receive a pre-trained model and 
maybe we don't have the uh, training data, data we have a kind of similar distribution data distribution but not necessarily the training data or we don't know how to train exact same model uh, in these kind of situations we need to remove maybe model from here so it's almost impossible to have transparent models in these kind of situations but in an ideal system as i said we need a reliable source of data and pre-processing we need transparent model or we need to make our models more transparent uh, to boost the system's explainability actually and also another challenge is creating explanations or generating explanations comprehensible by the end users it's also very challenging because you need to maybe you need to conduct a lot of uh, user evaluations to come up with a comprehensible explanation but sometimes your sources are not enough to do that like sometimes you don't have enough money to contact uh, user evaluations sometimes you don't have enough time to do that even if you have the money um, and also another big challenge is actually ethical issues because ML has a very uh, actually statistical perspective over the data. But meanwhile, in society, we have other kind of requirements like privacy, non being non-discriminative and all other stuff. So these are some of the challenges. I know there are many challenges, but uh, these challenges are like, the top challenges, maybe I can say, or some of the top challenges. And as you remember, two slides before I said I minimized these uh, developing these systems in three basic steps. And the first one was pre-processing. Actually, when we say pre-processing, you can easily understand the traditional pre-processing like cleaning the data or doing explanatory data analysis uh, or like upsampling, downsampling. Um, but in, when we try to develop XAI systems, we also need to add expert knowledge because it's quite valuable for us. As you remember, I said, we need to consider um, society requirements too or like uh, sometimes we develop some systems and we don't have enough knowledge about that particular field in these kind of uh, situations we need to uh, incorporate expert knowledge in our systems to create to be able to create uh, more comprehensible explanations and for sure ethical considerations and for example uh, actually we call it as explainable feature engineering uh, and there are some strategies like causal discovery uh, ensemble feature selection um, or like encoding or feature extraction and uh, actually the important point in here is you cannot just apply all of them and hope to have good results you need some experience and or you need to play around these metrics and find the most suitable one uh, with your application and before uh, switching to third section I want to uh, briefly mention that we can easily group uh, explanation methods into two uh, the first one is anti-hoc explainability, which is explainability of the models. Uh, the second group is post-hoc explainability, which, is the expl which are the explanations that you generate after the decisions are made, the model is trained, like not built in the model. Um, let's start with the first one, anti-hoc explainability, actually, or anti-hoc explanations. Um, there are some different themes in, actually, in this section, uh, we will try to make our models more explainable 
or more transparent at the same time. But by doing that, we have some, uh, like we have some teams like Additivity, which is like kind of measuring the individual effect of the features on the model or Bayesian approaches or constraints, like constraints are like, um, uh being aware of the reality and forcing your model to uh, obey this reality and uh, linearity is kind of uh, aligning with people people's thinking uh, approach and because we tend to think linearly and when we try to explain our methods or explain our method in a linear way it makes more sense for the end users and also prototypes like uh, make being enabling the users uh, making comparisons and uh, figuring out the uh, reason and process actually and sparsity and summarization is actually limiting or compressing the data volume or volume of the information that we have uh, now we will see in which kind of models we can apply we can apply which kind of uh, approaches for example for the neural networks uh, we can boost uh, their explainability using prototypes, constraints, and sparsity. And as you remember, I mentioned that we will use Antioch explanations, Antioch's explainability methods plus post hoc explainability methods. And for the post hoc explainability methods, these uh, kind of applications pairs nicely with gradients based post hoc explainability techniques. And also, in some cases, we need to sacrifice a lot from our from our model's performance, actually. But when we use prototypes, we don't uh, sacrifice a lot from accuracy, our accuracy. And this was a kind of very good improvement for the literature back in 2022 or 2021. I don't uh, recall it clearly right now and everybody was so excited about these kind of uh, applications and not sacrificing a lot from our accuracy still having enough uh, performance and actually these approaches caused uh, an idea that uh, even the most complex machine learning models can be made more explainable with, with careful thought and design this is theoretically true, but it's not very easy. Um, and here is two other different types of models that we, and we will see how we can make them more explainable. Uh, for the Bayesian rule list, we can list, uh, they are actually uh, quite like highly explainable. But if we want to boost their explainability, we can use Bayesian approaches, sparsity, and constraints. Um, and also for non-negative matrix factorization models, we can use constraints, prototypes, and sparsity. Um, and this also showed even unsupervised uh, learning models can be explainable. And that's why it's also a very popular application area in XAI literature. Um, these were the different types of models and how we can boost their explainability by using different techniques. Here we will talk about the post hoc explainability and we will see some different methods of post hoc explainability. Um, here is some concepts that we need to mention before uh, before starting with the methods. 
The first thing is scope of the explanation. Uh, it might be global or local. Global means covering entire data set, like entire distribution. Meanwhile, local means like just some part of the data. Uh, fidelity is kind of uh, accuracy of the explanations when you compare it to the other baseline explanations. Consistency uh, is like how consistent is your explanation method uh, among different models. And stability is actually how robust is your explanations to noise. Comprehensibility is understandability by humans. And model agnosticness, agnosticness and model specificness is like if your model is dependent on a specific type of model or it's if it's applicable to all types of models. Yeah, we can briefly mention all these. And for sure to be able to successfully apply these post-talk explanation methods to uh, the models, we need to have at least a fundamental uh, a model that makes sense at least at a fundamental fundamental level it needs to have a fundamental amount of accuracy for sure and it needs to have explainable features and re actually the number of features is also important in this phase um, and also modeling mechanism must be transparent and we need to like the features should be the actually the relationship be, relationship between the target and the features uh, makes needs to make sense then we can uh, successfully try to explain the method to apply postdoc explanations methods actually um, and here is different types of uh, explanations that we will mention for the rest of this, I mean, in upcoming slides. Surrogate models, visualizations or visualization-based approaches, uh, counterfactuals, prototypes, and future importances. Let's start with surrogate model approaches. Uh, so uh, the first one is actually decision trees. It's kind of building a decision tree between the uh, set of samples and their pred predictions. And it gives us explanations that are global, uh, low fidelity and high, highly comprehensible. And also we can easily apply uh, like evaluation methods that we use in normal decision trees. So it makes it more uh, measurable for us, like uh, to measure the comp uh, performance of these explanations actually. And the other one and very popular one is LIME, Local Interpretable Model Agnostic Explanations. Uh, actually, LIME allows us to uh, build a linear approach among, uh, around the model and it allows us to create low fidelity, low fidelity, high explainable, highly explainable and uh, sparse local explanations, but we need to be very careful about LIME uh, for very complex, I mean, applying LIME for very complex systems. Because as you remember in the beginning of this presentation, I mentioned them, it's so nice to fit uh, our explanations in a linear uh, surface, but the problem is it might fail sometimes. It's quite understandable, but it's very hard to fit a very complex system to a very linear uh, approach. So we need to be 
a bit careful while applying that. Uh, the other very popular approach is visualizations like partial dependence plots. Uh, since they are visual and since they somehow show the effects of the features on the model, they are really, really uh, popular and they consider that as they are quite understandable by the users, but I'm a bit skeptical. I mean, personally, I'm a bit skeptical about that idea. Uh, maybe we can mention some details about that for the rest, I mean, uh, for the future. Um, and counterfactuals and prototypes. Let's start with counterfactuals, actually. I mentioned that it's my topic. Uh, that's why I want to uh, a bit talk about that. Um, and I'll give the most basic, <laughs> actually the most cliche uh, example to explain what is counterfactual explanation. Let's imagine that we have uh, friends, uh, Leo and Maya, and they study together and they are in the same age and like they have very similar jobs and in the same time they wanted to buy a house for their sales and they applied to a bank and the bank uses a black box model to decide whose mortgage application will be approved whose will be rejected as you can see here um, Maya's application is approved and she's very happy with her house but meanwhile uh, Leo's is rejected and he doesn't understand why his application is rejected. But in this case, if the bank is using a counterfactual explanation, they could easily say that if you were increase your salary, uh, like five bucks more, you would get the loan. Now, Leo knows that how he, how he can change the decision of his application. Let's say he, uh change his job and get paid better or he's promoted he get gets paid uh better he can just apply once more and get his uh loan right so in counterfactual explanations we try to align with uh counterfactual thinking approach in the psychology and basically we try to explain how the user can flip the model's prediction. I mean, like we allow user to make reasoning between two instances and how can change the decision. Uh, yeah, and in prototypes, we uh, more or less uh, select cluster centroids in the uh, data distribution and again similar to counterfactual we allow users to uh, make meaningful comparisons and understand the reasoning process how why they and um, why these decisions are made in this case and in counterfact I mean in the literature mostly counterfactuals and prototypes considered are like powerful model agnostic explanations and uh, they say they are likely to preferable to lime and kernel shop but i don't agree with them to be honest it depends on your application and when you use uh, for example uh, kind of visualizations, visual, visualization methods with, for example, Lime and Kernel Shap, you can provide very comprehensible, like highly comprehensible uh, explanations, and they might be powerful than counterfactuals or prototypes. But at the same time, you can also use that visualizations for, uh, for example, counterfactuals and make them stronger than before. And another very popular approach is feature importances. Uh, and this here we have different kind of methods like model agnostic uh, methods like permutation importance and explanation explaining by removing or 
add-in. Uh, at the same time, some model-specific approaches, information gain, uh, and three sharp. Uh, I am sure if you are a bit interested in explainable AI, you have heard sharp before. That is uh, actually it com its roots uh, comes from game theory and. Uh, we call them like sharply additive explanations and they allow us to, as you can see here, they allow us to uh, enable to generate, uh, they allow us to generate global and local feature attributions. And actually in this approach, we uh, provide the users in which features are more important in which cases or in general uh, yeah and uh, in this feature actually these feature importance approaches are very popular in the industry because uh, they use like they use an approach like when one feature dominates the global feature importance they consider replacing that ml models with business rules uh, and applying that uh, other, for sure other kind of uh, approaches that we mentioned before on behalf of, uh, in addition to them. And they try to focus on that feature. And after seeing that, how we can make our models more explainability, explainable and how we can apply uh, postdoc explanation approaches to them. Now we need to know that how we can evaluate these explanations. Here we have three uh, main criteria. For sure, these criteria can be expanded. Like maybe I can just mention like 20 of them. Uh, but basically, as uh, we have been mentioning many times in this, presentation uh, our explanations needs to be comprehensible by and we need to evaluate that comprehensibility by domain experts and user studies uh, or maybe more quantitative way uh, fidelity is one of the most important metric uh, things to consider actually um, it can be done i mean measured by removing some important features and uh, seeing the differences between the explanations comparing uh, the generated explanations to their nearest neighbor explanations um, shuffling the labels and re-explaining and seeing the difference again uh, and the other thing is stability, like we want, as we mentioned before, we want our explanations to be stable, for sure. When we perturb our uh, instance slightly, we don't want our explanations to become something completely different. We want similar explanation to the original instance, actually. Uh, yeah. Now I want to briefly mention which kind of applications and tools exist in the literature and in the industry. And then we will briefly con conclude the uh, presentation finally. Yeah, uh, here is some applications. Uh, firstly, I want to mention that there were many Python packages for many different uh, purposes. If you're interested in explainable AI uh, domain, I would strongly recommend go through some of them at least and play around them because some of them also uh, support multimodal applications. Uh, and instead of, and some of them are like, instead of, uh, implementing or calling uh, different methods one by one. You can just use that platforms and easily uh, 
explore your data and which kind of explanation methods that you can apply and here is the python packages and there are also different platforms more professional and complete platforms that are used in academia and industry uh, here are two examples india and i see uh, just because i'm a part of ic project i want to mention the ic part because i know it better to be honest uh, in ic platform uh, we allow users to uh, actually ic platform uh, recommends the most suitable uh, explanation methods for that case and it allows us to personalize these systems according to personas uh, i mean uh, who is using that system currently and for sure also personalized evaluation evaluations and as i said mentioned before it recommends us or it uh, helps us to find the most suitable explainer uh, but before uh, ending up i want to briefly mention an application that is used in ic a use case actually that is used in ic project uh, that's an industry uh, and academy uh, collaboration project as i know if i'm wrong please fill in uh, correct me uh, uh, yeah anomaly they uh, both using an anomaly detection uh system in production lines and uh they are applying the deep learning methods to detect anomalies in the production line basically and their results like their outcome isn't like binary outcomes if there is a anomaly or not and actually this process makes it harder and more expensive to fix these kind of situations but in IC project they personalize the system and uh, try to understand the most uh, I mean what's the problem and why this is an uh, anomaly they try to explain that and that as I know it helps to minimize the cost of uh, figuring out what's wrong in this application or in this line, production line, I mean. Uh, yeah. I am so thankful for your <laughs> uh, patience. As we mentioned in the beginning, we can build our own pyramids according to our requirements. Uh, sometimes we will add, I mean, we will expand this list we will add more components. Sometimes we need to remove some parts because of our uh, application case. Uh, but basically we need to be aware of our requirements and then we need to consider ethical implications. Then we need to perform a very careful feature engineering. Afterwards, we need to select suitable approaches from explainable AI uh, approaches that can be uh, preferably uh, post-hoc and anti-hoc together, but sometimes only one of them. Uh, and also for sure, evaluating your explainers globally and explanations locally. And I think we will have some time to have questions. Again, I'm so thankful for your patience.